Welcome to the high-tech, ultra-sophisticated chemical test range at the Readiness Channel. But seriously, is pepper spray an effective tool for everyday carry and self-defense? In today's episode, we're going to take a look at that. We're going to answer some of those questions as well as look at some of the pros and cons to this self-defense tool. So what is pepper spray and what are some of the differences between the types of models available? Pepper spray or OC, oleoresin capsicum, is a derivative of the cayenne pepper or other similar hot peppers that is suspended in some type of a liquid form and pressurized with a propellant so that it can be sprayed out of the can. Not all pepper sprays are the same. Different manufacturers have different levels or percentages of the capsicinoids that are placed into their formula as well as some manufacturers placing other uh, irritants and chemicals in the mix. Some of the decisions that you'll be making when purchasing pepper spray is what type is best for me. Well, it's hard to answer that. We're going to go over that in our test range today and just show you some of the differences. There are stream type sprays that will spray a stream. There are large fogger models commonly used for bear and other animal uh, situations. We'll have a typical spray that produces a mist that goes out into a spray type pattern. And then we'll also talk about the gel models that are available today that offer a little bit more control over the stream and less exposure to you and people around you. Today's video we're going to share about what OC does do for you as well as talk about some BS busters that are common myths about the use of this product. So what does OC do when sprayed on an assailant? Well it will cause burning pain on the skin obviously. Uh, the sinus cavity and mouth area will also experience intense burning pain. The eyes will want to slam shut with a lot of excessive tearing, as well as respiratory side effects like coughing, a sensation of not being able to breathe. What does OC not do? Contrary to popular belief, OC does not always stop an attacker. Uh, some people are able to fight through these pain sensations that we just talked about. Other categories where somebody might not experience any sensation from the OC spray are people under the influence of certain drugs and along with those with certain mental illnesses. It's important to know what oleoresin capsicum spray does and does not do in every situation so that you can develop tactical planning and know how you'll respond to these variants if they occur. So what do we want to target when we're using OC spray? All of this area down here on the human body is going to be pretty much useless with oleoresin capsicum. They might experience a little burning sensation on the skin, but this is not what we're trying to do. What we want is right here, eyes, nose, mouth. This area right here is where we're going to be able to get the most incapacitation of an assailant using pepper spray. It's commonly taught that you shoot from here to here going across the eyes with pepper spray. And I don't have a dog in that fight. If somebody's taught you that and that's the method you use, that's fine. Uh, it's more important to me, however, that we get the spray on the face. Some other considerations that you're gonna to wanna to think about is where you carry your pepper spray. And I think this is a big one. Uh, I've seen a lot of friends of ours that carry them on keychains and little holsters and all kinds of things that aren't readily available for them. Again, going back to that seconds counting when you're confronted with a violent assailant. Uh, it's my belief that I want to keep my pepper spray somewhere where I can quickly uh, get it out. Practice your pepper spray draw and deploying that and get to where you're quick and efficient at that. And you don't fumbling around and trying to dig in your pocket when somebody's trying to attack you and find your pepper spray or fumble with your keys trying to get your holster open or whatever it is. For your us concealed carry people, when I'm armed on my strong side, I carry my pepper spray on the weak side. And that gives me the ability to pull this out, do what I have to do here. If that's not gonna work, uh, you've got a decision to make. You can either dispose of this and transfer over to concealed carry, or another option might be go ahead and go into a situation where you've pocketed up if you think you have time. Every situation is gonna be different, so you'll have to make that decision what's best for you. It's possible by throwing this down on the ground, there might be uh, friends. He might have friends around with him that can pick it up. They can join the attack also. Other people get a hold of it. It's commonly taught to do a thumb depressing of the OC spray. And you know, whatever works for you, whatever seems to be the quickest draw and being able to get into that position. I don't have any problem using finger spray either. It depends on how you carry your pepper spray 
and what method you're going to use to deploy it. You're not training for these things on a regular basis. You're not going to have time to figure it out when an attack is occurring. So whatever method you're going to use, train and practice that and become proficient at that draw and coming up on your target. Now let's display some of these different sprays and how they look when they're sprayed onto an assailant. We're going to pull out the fog or mist type spray first. This particular uh, style I think has a lot of advantages. I've used this professionally. This model here I tend to like because you have a very wide coverage of exposure when you spray somebody. The downside to it is you also get a lot of secondary exposure and mist that goes all over the place. So it's not real effective for uh, use in a closed off area, a confined room, things like that where you don't want everybody else getting covered. Just like that, there's a nice breeze blowing away from me today. We did that on purpose because it's something you want to think about when you're practicing. Uh, you, don't, you don't want to be practicing spraying with the wind coming right back on you, obviously. So you see here, and I am going to get some of this as I get close to the target. You see here that we were able to paint across this person's face, nose, mouth area, and we've got some pretty good coverage there. Now let's talk about the gel. Uh, the spray you just saw, I had to get out there pretty close and, and cover the person's face uh, with it. Distance can be your friend unless you're an MMA fighter, a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uh, person, something like that, where they come in and close the gap and take their person down. For most people, distance is your friend in an encounter. The gel spray has the distinct advantage of you being able to back up away. Give that guy a nice spray right across the face from a distance. I could even go quite a bit further back and I can still get my person in the face. And you can see the great coverage we have versus the spray uh, that tended to kind of saturate into the cardboard. But this gel spray has given that person's face a lot of coverage. And just for the fun of it, I'm gonna go back even further and let's see if I can get them from back here. Yeah, it's a little harder, but you're able to at least see that this tool gives you the additional option of distance where some of the others don't. This brings up a very important topic that I want to uh, cover while we're doing this video. I see people often carrying these little tiny, you know, pink, you know, cans of pepper spray on their keychains and all that stuff. You need to know that that little tiny canister may only give you a second or a second and a half uh, spray time before it's emptied out. This canister right here uh, is about two ounces and you can see that we just demonstrated that there and watch. It's all out. So we've got one exposure here. We talked a little bit, gave a second shot from a couple of distances and then I just emptied the can out right there. So it's important for you to know that I personally wouldn't carry some of these little teeny tiny canisters. Two ounces would be probably the minimum I would consider. And you'll also have to go over your own state laws. In California, uh, I believe four and a half ounces is the current maximum level that you can carry on you. But these canisters of this size are about two ounces are commonly sold for uh, self-defense. Now I want to talk about something else as we move through this encounter. I want to give you some ideas uh, to think about. I think a lot of people get the uh, false sense of security when they have something like this that they can stand in front of their, you know, assailant and go, "Don't! I'm going to pepper spray you." Uh, that would be foolish. Remember, we talked about this always isn't always going to be 100% effective in stopping somebody. Uh, a lot of people, I've gone through training, I know a lot of our military viewers have, where we've been exposed to this stuff and we've had uh, to go through an obstacle course where we're fighting people and doing all kinds of stuff along the way. So it, it is possible to fight through the pain of this. So we talked about distance a minute ago. If somebody's approaching you, it, it's not cowardice uh, of you to start giving yourself some distance between that person and you. That gives you some time to get your uh, tool that you're going to use out, ready to deploy. If that person is not listening to you and we have no other option, he's closing the gap, we're going to go ahead and give him a, a wipe across the face. But now this is an important step. We're not going to stand here. You've just sprayed somebody that period of time where you're going to want to pause and try to digest what's just occurred is a dangerous time for you. Right now is the time we need to step off the force line and get moving back. And fleeing the situation is what we're after. You're trying to slow down that person 
stop the attack so that you can flee to safety and get help. So just a quick recap. We, we gave him a douse of our spray. We're hoping that slowed down. He's digesting what just happened. His eyes are shut, watering, he's coughing, trying to catch his breath. You may have just angered him. He might be now charging after you. So if you're still standing here thinking you've got a problem, get off that force line and start giving yourself distance or flee if that's what you have to do. For you concealed carry people, you may think the pepper spray is not worth your time thinking about. Not every situation we encounter is a lethal force option. So why wouldn't you want to have a lower level force option tool at your disposal in your everyday carry? For you that don't have a capacity for violence, maybe you feel like something like this is, you're not comfortable uh, thinking about carrying it. I would submit to you, however, that in the US uh, in recent years, uh, a rape and sexual assault occurs every 19 seconds. Additionally, our murder rates are rising rapidly and are approaching a 30% increase in recent years. Currently, people are victimized at an alarming rate daily to aggravated assaults, burglaries, thefts, robberies, and so many of these other crimes that have become completely out of control in many areas of our society. Hey everybody, thanks for watching today's video. Just for a disclaimer, I am not a trained chemical weapons instructor. I'm not trying to instruct you on what to do. I'm just trying to give you some ideas and tips based off of the things I'm going to do in my personal life in these types of situations. Uh, use your best discretion, get some training, get some professional guidance on these things. It'll go a long way to making you better prepared should you face a violent encounter. And that's becoming more and more likely, sadly, in our society today. If you like the information that we provide in today's video, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. And hey, I just want to give a shout out to all of our subscribers and followers. Thank you. Uh, we reached over the uh, 1,000 subscriber mark. So our channel is moving along, and it's because of you, the viewers, that are making it happen, and we appreciate that. And remember, as always, get ready so that you and your family can succeed and thrive. That can be sprayed out of a... Dang it. OC or... I just said that. There is going to be where we're going to get the most in cap capacity. <coughs> that was <coughs> test, test, testing, testing. The wind blew, the ship flew, and in came the night crew.